Introducing now the principals first, in the red order to my right, wearing the white trunk, green trim, weighing in at 137 and a half pounds, with a professional record, 31 victories, 8 defeats, 22 wins coming by way of knockout, he hails from Lowell, Massachusetts, here is Irish Mickey Ward. In the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with white and black trim, weighing in at 138 pounds, he is undefeated in 16 professional bouts with 11 knockouts. He hails from Brooklyn, New York. Here is the undefeated Deb Super Judah. Zab Judah in 45 pro fights, or 16 pro fights, 45 professional rounds, has never lost a round. That's extraordinary. When you're a lefty with hand speed and foot speed, I liken back to somebody like Michael Nunn who had a record very similar to that. It's very tough for you to lose rounds if you're that good and you're that slick. Come on, put the dog Okay, back, 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 back. Let me see. I know, I know you're going to come. No, I do want some tape on this one here, look. I do want some tape on this right here. Lou Juba pointing out that there's some loose tape on the wrist of Ward. He wants that tightened up because that should obviously get in the box's eye. That's good for me. Good to go. Let's go. Not only fight ending, but career ending. Lou Juba uh, has been in these situations a million times before. If there's gamesmanship to be done, Lou will do it, God bless him. And by the way, a man is going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame of boxing. Yeah, I think that's time. Yeah, that's congratulations to him. We begin round number one. Zab Judah, Mickey Ward for the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship. And Judah with 11 knockouts in his career. Seven have come in the first round. Ward has four first-round knockouts. 17 of Ward's 22 knockouts have come within the first four rounds. So if he gets you, he tends to get you early, as most boxers do. And I think Ward a little off balance there. You know, Mickey Ward, in theory, should know how to fight a lefty because he himself switches to lefty a lot, especially early in his career. And you see the footwork. Ward will want to get his left foot outside the right foot of Judah and just the opposite if you're Judah. And then Ward would like to come with those double left hooks, which he's capable of doing. Change in the corner of Ward. Rupert Brown, long-time trainer is in. Good hook to the body by Judah. And the thing Brown wants mostly to affect is it's too late to change Ricky Ward's style totally at this juncture in his career. But I think I can make him punch more. He's been very inactive in, uh, in many fights. For instance, he only threw 12 punches per round against Alfonso Sanchez in a fight that he was badly behind in, but ended up winning because of a, a knockout shot. Right! He said if he punches more, more, I think Mickey will get back. Mickey. And they'd like to see better jabs out of Ward more often. And ironically, in Judah's corner, Lonnie Shields said, we want to slow down Judah's jab, if that's possible. They want to make it a more effective punch, as opposed to just a speed jab. Straight left hand of Judah is his big power weapon. I mean, when he gets it in, he can start you guys. And that's something he just didn't show as an amateur. But now as a professional, he is an egg. Hey, he's a pretty good fighter who's fighting this Saturday. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya, who didn't show power as he would call as an amateur because of the hands that were hurting him and whatever. And then when he became a pro, of course, had lots of power. Watch your head, Mickey. Watch that head. Ronnie Shields works the corner along with Lee Judah. Uh, hook downstairs by Mickey Ward. Look at Judah put his punch in again on a low blow. That was very low. Mickey Ward angry. And Judah taunting at Ward. Ward saying that was low. And under the rules, Ward could have up to five minutes to gather himself. We take a look at it. We see how low this punch might have been. Bring him up now, right? Oh, yeah, that was low. Make no mistake about it. That was below the belt line. Well under the belt line. And it's not like Ward has his trunks up really high. No, they're really in the proper 
positioning, and he did get some time. Both men really want to work the body, interestingly enough. Ward certainly wants to land that left hook to the body, and Judah has a very good straight left hand to the body, especially when it's legal. Final 10 seconds of round one. It is scheduled for 12. The USBA Junior Welterweight title at stake. Judah and Ward on the deuce. With a very good moment in the last round. You see how he got the right footwork. He got his right foot outside Ward's left foot, and Ward even tripped, and so the straight left hand got in. That is textbook work by a lefty. Round number two underway in the scheduled 12-round bout for the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship. Zab Judith, 20 years of age, out of Brooklyn, New York, and Mickey Ward from Lowell, Massachusetts. Ward with 234 professional rounds under his belt now. See the numbers in round one. A very good round for Zab Judah, but a telling statistic was the one we threw up there, how much longer Mickey Ward's fights go, and that's what Ward's people are pinning their hopes on. Boy, Judah going downstairs, and here's Ward Swift um, going to the lefty style. I think that's a very good move for him. Now, Judah only landed 8 of 44 jabs in round one. They would like to see that number increase, to be sure. Now, in Judah's camp, they prepared for this. They had him work with Vivian Harris, who we've talked about several times. He fought tonight. And Kasim Omar to get him used to Ward switching. But it's a little different, I'll, I guess, when you get in a real fight. It really is. And more, very much when a guy shoots his lefty against the southpaw, it can be troublesome. Let's see if it is. Well, so far, Judah's handling it pretty darn well, isn't he? He goes on the attack against Ward. What should Judah do? Well, I think if I'm a lefty, I think you, the weapons that are going to work is your traditional stuff. Straight jab, straight left hand, and Judah has those. Sometimes lefties just are so perplexed by seeing the mirror image of themselves, they get away from their normal game plan. Now, Ward has taken some shots in this round, but you understand his whole game plan revolves around what's going to happen in rounds. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten of this spot. So if he can get through to that point in the fight without being cut, without being hurt real badly, he's a happy camper. Under a minute to go in round number two. Although Judah was not on the United States Olympic boxing team in 1996, he's part of that entire amateur crop of outstanding boxers led by Fernando Vargas and Floyd Mayweather and so on and so forth. We're really making oh. names with David Reed, who won the gold, obviously. Only one loss among them. Uh, Albert Guardado had a loss, and there's a draw for Roshai Wells, and the rest uh, have all been wins. Good left uppercut by Judah. Ward saying, that didn't hurt me. Deb Judah's going to be tested here tonight. He's throwing big power punches, the kind that have been really hurting most opponents. Mickey Ward isn't hurt yet, so... Judah's going to find out how he does, I think, in these middle and later rounds. Final seconds of round two. Judah and Ward on the deuce. Mikasuki Indian Reservation. Bob Papa along with Al Bernstein. Glad you can join us. Round number three underway between Zab Judah and Mickey Ward. At stake, the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship. Earlier, Diabella Cercato stopped Leonardo Moss with a TKO in round three. Punches through the first two rounds. Well, this is not surprising. 
I think most people expected you to get off to a very good start and maybe Ward to be uh, a little lethargic early, although the one part of that that will not please Rupert Brown, Ward's new trainer, is the small number of punches that Ward has thrown. Judah, by the way, has landed 38 of 61 power shots, but only 12 of 85 jabs. Isn't it fascinating, Bob, when you and I saw him as an amateur, the jab was what he lived and died by. Now he's become a power puncher. Mm -hmm. And there was a good power punch, straight left hand. Well, we saw now uh, Judah complaining that he was head-butted. Well, that's, left. excuse me, Bob, veteran Mickey Ward says, excuse me, young man, you're going to throw a left hand low? I know how to use my head. Yeah, at the Olympic trials, Judah was almost too cute. Too much in the Pernell Whitaker mode at the Olympic trials and not enough urgency. And that was when he lost to David Diaz, who was the antithesis of that, a very aggressive fighter. David's on our card next Sunday night. And and he's he's a very entertaining young man as a pro as well. And you pointed out the great success these boxers have had. How about Lehman Brewster, also an amateur that came out of that group who didn't go to the Olympics? He was making his way as a heavyweight and doing well. Now Ward switching to lefty again. It's not that he's super effective as a lefty, but I think he wants to use that as a fight-extending ploy. Good uppercut by Judith. But look how Ward blocks a lot of those shots. George talking to him. Come Mickey on, Ward is keeping up a steady chatter with Zab Judah, maybe trying to get under his skin, uh, play some gamesmanship with the youngster. All around the sandwich, you pick up with Augie Sanchez. Yeah, losing uh, for the first time. But he also an amateur from that. Time. Yes. Augie has done well up to the point of that loss. Very much a tactical fight for Ward. Judah throwing many more punches, being the aggressor. Will Ward have it to turn on when he needs it? Now that little pitter pat we saw from Judah is what his camp would like to see him eliminate. End of round number three. Ward and Judah. Papa Al Bernstein, welcome you back to the Miccosukee Indian Reservation. Round number four underway here in Miami. Zabdiel Judah and Mickey Ward battling it out for the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship. Judah 15 and 0 with 11 knockouts, 20 years of age. Ward 32 years old, 31 and 8, 22 knockouts. Ward in quest of that elusive title. You take a look at punch numbers in round three. And you see Judah with the big edge, but you saw a moment. Look at the hook of Ward. Something has happened here. And for all the flash of Zab Judah, he better pay attention to keeping his right hand up because Mickey Ward has found a way to get the left hand in as a righty and even as a lefty. Zab Judah is a young man with a lot of talent, but Mickey Ward says that experience may tell the story tonight. Well, experience is one thing, but uh, not everyone's going to knock everybody out. That's another thing. And you think you're going to go in and knock all these punches in the first, second round and knock people out. You know, what's he going to do when it's like the eighth round and uh, I'm coming on and he's getting tired? He hasn't done it. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that experience, you know, comes in. You know, he thinks, you know, if he thinks he can go in there and knock people out, it doesn't always happen. That's a veteran for you. And so far it hasn't happened. That is no guarantee that Ward's going to dominate the later rounds because there are people in Judah's corner that think he can do well in the later rounds. Yeah, Lou Judas said we'll find out about you tonight. I spoke with Scooter Honig, who does strength and conditioning for Andrew Gallat and some of the other main event boxers, and he said that Judah is conditioned to go the full 12 rounds. But is he conditioned to fight in the full 12 rounds? You know, when you get into those critical moments, how will he react? That remains to be seen. 
Now, from a tactical standpoint, I know Mickey Ward wanted to be a lefty to confuse Judah, extend the fight, but I think now his best bet is to go back to righty for this reason. His best power punch that he's shown in this spot is the left hand, and I think he can land it better as a righty using the left hook than he can as a lefty throwing the straight right, although there he got the right hook. Here. But that's not as powerful a punch for Mickey Ward. Oh, nice off the cut by Judah. I think Ward a little upset with himself for allowing it to happen. Very reminiscent of some other Mickey Ward losses where he loses because he doesn't throw enough punches. Judah now spins Ward away. Some bad blood developing between these two through the first four rounds of action. Scheduled for 12 back after this timeout. Round number five underway. Only the fourth time in Zabdiel Judah's career he's been past four rounds. Bob Popple along with Al Bernstein from the Miccosukee Indian Reservation. You take a look at some punch numbers in this USBA Junior Welterweight Championship bout. Well, it continues with Judah doing better, though landing at not a very good percentage. But because he's thrown so many more and because Ward is so inaccurate, he's getting the job done. What about corner talk, Al? We listened in both corners while we were away from her. Well, they feel that Judah is being very tentative and stepping back too much. And uh, Rupert Brown was talking about Ward taking a double step. I assume he means to his left when he's a righty to get the angle on the soft one. Comes out as a lefty again, though. And I, while I know what this tactic's about, at a certain point, being behind all these points, you're going to have to throw some power punches and make something happen. I just don't know if Ward can do that as a lefty. It's not been in his history to do that as a lefty. Good body shot and a left hand from Judah, but Ward took it. Now some blood from the nose of Mickey Ward. That was after a clash of heads. Mickey Ward's been on ESPN so much over his career. Started back in 1986. And how about this? He had a four-loss in the 1990 91 where here's the guys he lost to Harold Brazier, Charles Murray, Tony Martin, and Ricky Myers. That's a tough quartet to fight right in a row, and predictably he lost by decision. He was a disheartened young man at that point, got out of boxing, but uh, came back and has acquitted himself well. The corner of Ward feels that Judah is trying to pace himself for later rounds, and they felt that Ward needs to pressure mm -hmm. the younger fighter a bit more. And that was good advice because it doesn't do Ward any good to get Judah in the later rounds. If he hasn't pressured him, then Judah is completely fresh. And Ward going back to righty now. Offensively, this has not been a good effort so far for Mickey Ward, and he has not done what Rupert Brown, his trainer, hoped he would do, and that is throw more punches. He's been inactive. Well, still early to tell if Judah's the second coming of Parnell Whitaker, but from a style standpoint, he is. Well, he has everything. He's got hand speed, foot speed, good power. We'll find out more about his power as he gets in against the better fighters like Mickey Ward, but you're not going to knock everybody out anyway. And how about this? If you've got this kind of hand speed and foot speed and your lefty to boot, there are many winnable fights out there for you. Closing seconds of round number five, Zab Judah controlling the action. This bout scheduled for 12. Back to Miami after this. Zab Judah in the last round, showing you some of the accuracy that he had in that round. The good uppercut, the straight left hand. That's an intriguing combination that you can't throw unless you have really good hand speed. And we begin round number six between Judah and Mickey Ward. Scheduled for 12 rounds. Let's take a look at some punch numbers through five rounds. Judah landing not at the percentage he wants, and the reason is he's only landed 19 of 192 jabs. But when you compare it to what Ward is doing, it's positively spectacular. And the power shot. 84 of 147 power shots landed by Judah, and I have Judah ahead winning all five of these rounds. So, Deb Judah, the boxer, is uh, 
not the signature Zab Judah anymore. He is very much a puncher. Well, in his last fight against Angel Beltre, body punches were the order on April the 14th. And there you get a look at the man on your left, Rupert Brown, the new trainer of Mickey Ward. Now, he's worked some pretty good corners. He was day. with Livingstone Bramble for years and was in the corner of Bramble that night in Buffalo, one of the great boxing nights of all time with Bramble and Mancini. Had a terrific match, and Bramble ended up winning that great title for Mancini. about Nicky Ward's corner at all is whether he should be a lefty or a righty. I guess they have it in their mind he's supposed to be a lefty. And I have to say, I disagree with that strategy. It has not worked that effectively. He's, he's just a little bit more tentative as a puncher. Now, I move back to righty as a lefty. Now, in his younger days, when he switched to lefty, he, I think he was looking for power shots more. He'd wade in and get in the inside. That's not the case now. That's the angle that the judges watch about. Three judges seated at ringside. side. There have been no knockdowns in this bout. Judah did have a low blow to Ward. Judah was cautioned. The interesting thing about this performance by Judah the fight has not been that scintillating, but it's been a workmanlike effort. Round six in the book. Round seven getting set to start. And at the end of round number six, Al, our best action of the bout. They went at it. Both men uh, felt that they landed a punch afterwards. And uh, referee Jorge Alonso had strong admonitions to both fighters. He said, you, you guys do that again, I'll disqualify you. At stake, the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship, vacant title. Now, maybe a small change going on here. For one thing, Nicky Ward threw a lot more punches in that round than he's thrown. And Judah landed fewer than he's been landing. So, could we be in a part of the fight where what Nicky Ward hoped would happen is going to happen, that he's going to get things done in these later rounds. Let's see. Ward has only been, pa uh, Judah has only been past round six once before, that in December of 1997, an eight-round decision against Anthony Johnson. Obviously, this bout is scheduled for 12 rounds, so psychologically some uncharted waters. Now, they want Judah to get to work and set down on his punches a little bit. That's what Ronnie Shields told him. If you're a young fighter and you get into rounds where you have the seeds of doubt about whether you're going to be effective, you may revert back to the thing that you've always done. And in Judah's case, it is to become very much a pity pat boxer and box his way to victory. Prices. Again, they want Judah to throw the jab with some type of authority. That's the kind of combinations they want, where he stayed there, didn't run away, and put some leverage on those punches. And Ward blocked most of them, but he's spending so much time blocking punches that he's not throwing any. And again, the offense from Ward is so minute. He's just not throwing too many punches. Lee Duva looking on with a young man that he has favorably compared to Pernell Whitaker, hoping that he's the next generation of uh, junior welterweight or welterweight to carry that main events banner to a world championship. Mickey Ward needs to get it done. Judah laying on the inside with him. Ward landed a couple good shots. He needs to get busy and throw down on 
Dab Judo with lots of leverage and power. The good right hook by Ward. Then Judah dances away, waning seconds of round seven. For the first time in this fight, Ward's feeling it, Bob. Take it to the corner of Irish Mickey Ward, his trainer, Rupert Brown. That's it, Mickey. That's it, Mickey. Another one. Another one like that, Mickey. Come on. You gotta work, Mickey. You gotta work. You gotta work, Mickey. I want you to work with good hand, Mickey. You may name say you're going to the Mickey. Going to the Mickey. Who's still fucking? Hold this water. Hold this water. Hold the way to the Mickey. Okay, I want you to grab his neck. Then I have enough hand in there. Look, when you get in your side, go to the body with this guy. No, you will fight the jab. Right? Exactly. You will fight the jab. Don't stand in front of him too much. Don't stand in front of him. Hold up. 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 Hold Well, not a good total for either man, but it's especially daunting for Judah. When you're a lefty, you don't expect your opponent to land that many jabs against you, but uh, he is not landing many at all, and he wants to land those jabs. Well, Mickey Ward has made his bed, and he's going to lie in it as a left-hander at least 80% of the time in this fight. Let's see if I'm wrong and he made the right decision. Let's see if in these later rounds he can power punch as a lefty. He did land some pretty good right hooks uh, in the last round. That's where Ward has to work, though. He cannot lay there and do nothing. And that's the punch he needs. He's not throwing it. He really should be a righty throwing that hook to the body into the head. He'll get more leverage, I think, that way. Judah doing a lot of styling, but not a lot of landing here in round eight. See, and you saw Mickey Ward. Great shot of him land that right hook. That's fine that he landed it, but guess what? He can't throw it with great power from the left-handed stance, and so it's not as effective as he would like. But look how good those left hands are, and he hurt you with that one, I yeah, think. Yeah, he did. He can throw those left hands. And another one. I don't think Judas landed any punches in this round. And look how Ward's cutting off the ring. That's what a veteran knows how to do. And so as Mickey Ward hopes, and as he predicted, he's finding something that works here in the later rounds. A few jabs from Judah, but he's just running here in round eight. Now, if you have the hand and foot speed of Judah, and you're a billion rounds ahead, which he is, seven to be exact, this will serve you well, but can you do that for an entire fight and still win it? And can you retain your marketability by doing that? And Ward kind of boots in the crowd and says, hey, this guy's running for me. He's supposed to be the big phenom. Why is he running away? And this is a Javelin Tortado crowd. He scored a third round knockout earlier, so they'd like to see some blistering. Late power from Ward. He has a ninth round knockout against Louis Beter on ESPN back in April of 96. And Judah in the full retreat mode here in round eight. So has the tide turned? We'll find out after this message. Mickey Ward had a 12 to 2 edge in power shots in that last round, and this is why. Look at those lefts ripping to the body and the head. He did that from a lefty stance and did it with power, which I didn't think he could do. We begin round number nine, scheduled for 12. Judah controlled the first six and a half, seven rounds, and Ward. As you see the disparity in experience with a very good round eight. And a straight left hand just got there by Ward. Now, even though Judah had that edge, I gave Ward the edge because of power punching. Something very important is happening here. Ward is landing punches. He couldn't land earlier in the fight because Judah has slowed down a little bit in his reflexes. And maybe he's a little tired. And the corner of Judah imploring him in between rounds, use your jab. Now, one of the reasons why he does, he's, a, he's a little concerned about using his jab is he's been countered with the left hand of Ward. 
But he's not throwing that hard jab that they said right. they added to his repertoire. And that would be the one that would discourage Ward from countering. That hook blocked by Judah. Ward says, I am fit. Hit me all you want. Nicky Ward has visions of landing that right hook and hurting Judah with it. Ooh, low blow from Ward. And that's... <laughs> and how about Nicky Ward? He says, well, Judah played with me when he landed a low blow. I'm going to give him a little taunting. But that is also a veteran trick. Is Mickey Ward going to have a point taken away? No way. But meanwhile, he's added to Judah's role. Right. A tactical move, in my opinion, by Mickey Ward. Yeah. Whether it was intentional or not, he didn't care too much. Look at He didn't care too much to land a low blow because it's even and no point should be deducted from him. Yeah, it's like baseball. You brush back my star, I'll brush back yours, especially it, in the American League. And it comes, you well, see what some of the fans think of it, it comes at a time in the fight when Judah can ill afford that kind of thing to happen. Very interesting maneuver by Mickey Ward. Well, that's a veteran for you. Stretching, bending, slightly breaking the rules. There's the right hook by Ward, not just glancing off the head of Judah. This is a very close round, although Ward had some good moments early. Judah's definitely lost some steam off his jab and his other punches. But I will stick to my position that as a lefty, Ward can't throw as many good power punches. And so even if stylistically it's messing Judah up a little bit, I just still believe as a righty, now he needs to land big punches. You also wonder if doubt, and only Zab Judah could answer that question, if some doubt has creeped into his mind about the distance. And let's remember, he's a 20-year-old in his 16th pro fight, so we can't expect him to be perfect. And he has never been this thing, so it would be normal for there to be some doubt. Final seconds of round nine. You can sense the tide turning a little bit for Mickey Ward against Zab Judah. Zab Judah and Mickey Ward begin round number 10 in the scheduled 12 round USDA junior welterweight bout. Bob Popple along with Al Bernstein from Miami, the Mikasuki Indian Reservation. Glad you can join us. Punch numbers in round nine. Judah getting the edge in that round. Uh, they both landed at 28%, and among power shots, uh, Judah actually outlanded Ward 16 to 12. So that was a pretty good comeback round for Judah. Al scorecard through the first nine frames. I have Judah way ahead, but Bob, you made an interesting comment in the uh, in the break. Well, it is the closest lopsided fight I think you'll find. Yeah, well, it's certainly one of the most intriguing. And you just wonder if Zab Judah is going to wind up in this bout like real quiet and get caught at the wire, even though he has the big. Cushion, referring to Belmont State yesterday on ABC. <laughs> Real quiet, uh, upset in that break. There's a, the right hook downstairs by Judah. And let's put this in perspective. Judah is winning this bout, there's no question about that, and doing many good things in this bout. And really, to be fair, this is the toughest guy he's ever fought, the longest distance he's ever gone in the most pressure. So given all that, it's hard to criticize Zab Judas, just that he has slowed a bit, and what he's learning is what Ward said during the fight. You're not going to knock everybody out, and you're going to have to fight a good pace all the way through. Here in round 10, Zab Judas is doing just that. The lead left from the 20-year-old from the Flatbush section of Brooklyn. See, there's the left hand by Mickey Ward. I think when it's all said and done, Mickey's going to rue the fact that he fought as a lefty. If he were a righty ripping those hooks to the body, he could then come to the head with the punch and land it with power. He can't do that as a lefty. And more than anything, tactically, that's hurting him. Counter see, right hand from Ward. See, but when he lands as a lefty with that counter right hook, it just isn't going to hurt Judah. 
and that's been his problem. So I think he and Rupert Brown tactically, if it was a collective effort, made a serious mistake. Well, a very good round 10 for Zab Judah. Except for a few counter punches to Ward, he has done very well. Ripping shots both upstairs and downstairs. And although Ward has blocked quite a bit of them, Judah putting his punches together. Final seconds of round 10, bout scheduled for 12. Hope you're enjoying it tonight on ESPN2. And here is Zab Judah at the end of the round, landing a good straight left hand and then gives him a little of the Judah shuffle, I guess. And isn't that what they used to get mad at Pernell Whitaker for, too, for yeah. <laughs> So he picked up everything Pernell has. We begin round number 11. Very impressive round number 10 for Judah. There are the numbers three 10 rounds. Well, he's done a, an excellent job. Even though his percentage is lower than he would like, he's in against the veteran, and surely he has not allowed uh, Ward to do well. And I know that Rupert Brown and Ward wanted them to throw more than 367 punches to this point. Judah really ripping body shots and good right hook. Now, see, oh, there he is as a righty, and Ward throws that counter left hook and lands it, then switches to the lefty stance. It ain't going to work that way for him. He has got to be a righty to have any small chance of winning this fight. And I'm astonished that he and Rupert Brown can't figure that out. Judah peppering away. Well, Judah Ward. using his head there, coming in with his head first. Now, there's Ward as a righty. What he wants to do right now, if he can, is grip those left hooks. He's capable of it. He's done it as a lefty, but it's not as effective. In round 10, Judah threw 56 more punches than Ward. And sort of grabbed back control of the bout. It's not just good enough for Mickey Ward to get to the later rounds. He had to get to the later rounds and be effective. And Zab Judah had to be tired enough to not do well. And that has not necessarily been the case here. But it hasn't been. Left hand from Judah. And then immediately he moves away. And that's what that foot speed will do for you. He has it. Certainly more confident Judah in the last round or two. For a moment around round eight, it looked like there was a, a seeds of doubt in Judah's mind that uh, he's gotten it back. For Mickey Ward at 32, he said every bout is a must win. And if he loses this one, certainly he's going to hurt his chances. Surely, though, he can hang around to that fight, but he wants to lose fight. Good right hook by Judah. And that drove Ward back. Yes, and Judah slipped down. In his own corner, the left hand started it, then that right that you mentioned, Al. Ironically, it was water in his own corner that tripped him. Closing seconds of round 11, Judah has gone to the whip, and he's pulling away down the stretch. Twelfth and final round, Zab Judah and Mickey Ward for the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship. For the young Judah, he hopes a first step toward world championship glory. Punch numbers in round 11 now. Well, not only did he dominate, how about this? 33 to 1 in power punches was his edge, and Mickey Ward... Looks all but a beaten fighter, throwing only 18 punches in a round in which he was supposed to be the one coming on against the tired Zab Judah. Big moment in Zab Judah's young career in the eighth round and the ninth round when he sucked it up and altered things. Al Shortcard through 11 rounds. I have Judah winning everything but one round, and uh, I think uh, all in all, He's going to look at this performance, and he and his people are going to be pretty pleased. A few things to pick on. Maybe a better jab would have been in order, but beyond that, you have to be pleased with what he's done against Ward. One thing that they'll take if he does go on to win is the fact that 
His confidence appeared a bit shaken near the end of round seven and definitely in round number eight. He got on the bicycle, he regrouped. He didn't make a fatal mistake. And then he came on strong. Bring him up, dude. Bring him up, baby. And he's been consistent in his efforts, really. Well, we will see the junior welterweight IBF champion, uh, Vince Phillips, on ESPN in July against Hector Kiro, which is probably taking a peek at this to see one of his young rivals or potential rivals. Judo sending Ward back. Ward blocked most of it, but still having a hard time defending against Judo. And Mickey Ward looking more like he did about four or five years ago when he was a fighter that didn't seem to have purpose or plan when he got into the ring. And truthfully, to some degree, that's the way he's looked here tonight. Break! Break clean now! Break clean! That's it. <laughs> They're so no close. the break, Mickey! Wow. I mean, he's even landing him from the lefty stance. If he was a righty getting on the inside and throwing those shots, he maybe could have made something happen against Stewart, but not this way. Final 10 seconds of the bout. Judah slipping most of those punches, and there's the bell. Judah goes to the ropes to celebrate. Who is that? I said that guy over there, Luke. He might be a little tired because he couldn't quite get up to the, to the second strand with his left leg. And he just stood there and said, you know, this is as high as I'm going to get, and I'm going to stay right here. We will have the judges' decision, and we'll talk with the winner after this timeout on ESPN2. For Mickey Ward and Zabdiel Judah. Judah obviously throwing many, many more punches, 458 more, and he lands nearly 200 more punches. The connect percentage, not that great, but a big test for Judah, and it appears that he passed it with flying colors. Let's find out what the judges thought. Here's Mark Firo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Paul Herman scores about 119-109. And judges Bill Ray and Stu Winston both score it 118-110. All to the winner by unanimous decision and USBA Junior Welterweight Champion, the Super Judah. So 20-year-old Zab Judah adds what he hopes is the first of many belts, the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship, with a unanimous decision against Mickey Ward.